The universal affirmative and universal negative are two of the four types of categorical propositions. They are defined as follows. Universal affirmative, a proposition stating that all members of a given category belong to another category. These propositions are of the form, all S is P, where S is a subject and P the predicate. These are also sometimes referred to as A sentences. Universal negative, a proposition stating that no members of a given category belong to another category. These propositions are of the form, no S is P, where S is the subject and P is the predicate. These are also sometimes referred to as E sentences. Generally, to affirm is to say yes to something or to take it as true. To negate is to say no or to take it as false. Universal affirmative and negative propositions get their names by affirming or denying that some predicate is true of a subject. For instance, in the universal affirmative proposition, all cats are mammals, we affirm that the predicate, is a mammal, is true of every cat. In the universal negative proposition, no cats are reptiles, we deny that the predicate, is a reptile, is true of any cat. It is important to observe, however, that in saying a proposition is affirmative, we are not saying that we affirm it in the sense that we think the proposition as a whole is true. Affirmative and negative propositions get their names for what they express about their subjects. Affirmative propositions say that some predicate is true of their subject. Negative propositions deny that some predicate is true of their subject. Any of these propositions taken as a whole can turn out to be true or false, as the examples below will show. Lastly, we should note that these propositions are universal because they talk about all members of a given category, not just some or one member. Compare, for example, all cats are mammals with my cat is a mammal. Only the first is a universal proposition, speaking about all cats rather than just this or that particular cat. These latter propositions are called particular propositions. We'll set these aside for the next lesson. Let's see some examples. Let's look at the following propositions. First, all cats are animals. Second, all cats are albino. Propositions one and two are both examples of the universal affirmative. However, there is an important distinction between these propositions. The first is true, whereas the second is false. One is true because all cats are in fact animals, but two is false because albino cats are actually quite rare. We can see from two that an affirmative statement is not the same thing as a true statement. Here are some examples of universal negative propositions. Three. No snakes are reptiles. Four, no snakes are birds. Propositions three and four are both examples of the universal negative. But once again, there is an important distinction between these propositions. Three is false, whereas four is true. We can see from four that a negative statement is not the same thing as a false statement. Think of your own examples. A universal affirmative proposition that is true, a universal affirmative proposition that is false, a universal negative proposition that is true, and a universal negative proposition that is false. To get a better sense of how universal affirmative and negative propositions compare to one another, it can be helpful to try to visualize these two kinds of propositions. For this, we can use what are called Euler circles and Venn diagrams. In Euler circles, we look to spatial relations to understand the propositions. On the left, we see that the circles labeled cat is included in the circle labeled animal. This relation represents the universal affirmative proposition, all cats are animals. On the right, we see that there is no overlapping part between the circle labeled snake and the circle labeled bird. This relation represents the universal negative proposition, no snakes or birds. In Venn diagrams, we look to shading to try to understand the propositions. When something is shaded out, you can think of it as being crossed out. In other words, the shading signifies that nothing belongs to the category in question. On the left, we see that the region labeled cat, but not animal, is shaded out. This means that there are no cats that are not animals. This is in turn equivalent to the universal affirmative proposition, all cats are animals. On the right, we see that the region labeled snake and bird is shaded out. This represents the universal negative proposition, no snakes are birds. She can also be understood as saying that there is no snake that is a bird. In conclusion, many of the assertions that we make about the world are actually instances of universal affirmative or universal negative propositions. Because of this, Understanding the way that these two types of propositions function and relate to one another is very important. In doing so, we get a more clear idea about what exactly we're asserting about the world around us.